shows that it's no longer a dream. And Dr. Ako, uh, I wanted to thank Representative Marcus O'Shiro, who was present and supportive of the very first hemp project in 1999 in his district. Lynn, Representative Lynn DeCoy, and M Maui HCNS is very interested, so interested in getting involved with hemp that they're going to the conference in Kentucky end of September, where I'll be attending. And of course, Senator Mike Gabbard, who is our new chair of agriculture and is going to be the leader with moving hemp forward for all of Hawaii's farmers in the legislature. We stumbled last year, and I think with Senator Gabbard, we'll really move ahead, and I appreciate it. Um, Dr. Harry Ako is the lead scientist, the principal investigator, and he's the one that really knows all about this project and can be able to tell you why Hawaii is the, a proper place and a wonderful place for growing industrial hemp, not just for our islands, but I'll let Harry tell the rest of what that dream will be. That's you all know already what is hemp. There's recreational hemp. There's medicinal hemp, which is, is a big thing now. It's important. Um, and what we're doing is industrial hemp. Okay. Um, it, it's def these hemps are defined by the, the psychoactive component content of the hemp. This one is, has no psychoactive component. If you, if you smoke it, you'll get sick. <laughs> That's all will happen. Okay. The third slide right here, you all know, some of you know this. Okay. In this thing, we tried to get the paperwork through. We ran into four at least brick walls, totally brick walls. You cannot penetrate. And so what we did was we called on Superwoman and, <laughs> and she got us past it. Um, okay. This fourth one here, plant of 25,000 uses. Um, I'll get into this a little bit. Um, locally, it seems to me that some people have stepped up. Um, HCNS is thinking of, of, of growing hemp uh, plants to make hempcrete to build homes. Don Nelson has built a little home and probably he's gonna, I heard that he's gonna tear down his oh, regular yes. home, yes. which is, I think when they, you know, you're talking NBA and millions of dollars salary a year, he probably has a mansion, not a house. <laughs> and so he's going to tear it down and, and build a hemp, a hempcrete mansion. So a hempcrete is one thing. Seeds, Hawaii is a weird combination of very high tech. We know how to do PCR. We have known this for 20 years. And we can do very high tech things and we, we're, we're subtropical. So we, can, we have the weather. So we supply seeds of shrimp, oysters, corn, and soybeans around the world. Also sugarcane seeds. So HCNS is thinking of being, grabbing the market for hemp seeds for everywhere. So if Kentucky wants to grow hemp, they'd come to Hawaii to buy seeds. Um, that's why this one right here, this scrawny little one, that's a temperate zone seed, okay? If we're gonna sell it to Colorado, they're gonna want the temperate zone seed because they're in the temperate zone. So we have to figure out a way um, to, to, to grow temperate zone seeds in a tropical environment such as we have. And I think we probably use normal breeding instead of GMO techniques because we don't know which gene to insert where. <laughs> it's, sim it's simple as that. Um, you can see several characteristics. First of all, the fiber hemp grows super fast. You know, they just simply, this is it. Okay? If you have a, please note, if you look on the bottom there, um, there are no weeds. These are self weeding plants. They, well, you can just see why. They make shade and no weeds can grow because they don't get sunlight. Is um, it just because of that or is, is there some other property that they might, wards? They might uh, exude allelopathic chemicals, you know, or there might be a, a chemical defense mechanism the plants have 
spot. Just the fact that they don't make, they don't let any sunlight go through. That's probably good enough. Okay. Um, we had challenges with regard to sprouting, and I think here we we, we now know what we can do. Uh, Masahiro was is our sprouting guy, and uh, he's gotten good at it, and we're got we've got we've gotten competent at it. But we have things for the future. We don't want to have to sprout in seed trays. We want to be able to sprout in the field. And right now we have not been able to thus far. Okay. So we have two kinds of hemp. The big giant monster ones. I call them monsters. They're beasts. I mean, this is crazy. They're 10 weeks old. They got this big with 10 weeks old. Um, we have a picture here on this slide. And that's Melody with a baby hemp plant, and that's eight weeks old. At 80 weeks old, they're monsters at that point too. So the big ones will get the inner core of the, the stalks. That's why we want to weigh the stalks. And we'll add lime or, or uh, aluminum, magnesium oxalate or something this guy there's a new technique now and they make stronger hempcrete and so it's a it's a it's a forest um, homegrown recyclable building material that does not need to be shipped in it's grown here and we'll make houses out of it so that's the hempcrete the fiber hemp is hempcrete and then the seeds maybe we can capture yet another monopoly for High technology um, uh, monopoly for Hawaii that is to say hemp seeds okay um, you know I, in, in a sense one one time our old Dean said uh, you know we do not grow green plants we grow green money and so that's uh, the philosophy and so you've already seen some of the seed hemp you can just see the plants and they're just covered with seeds right and you know, uh, Cynthia brought some hemp chips one time at the hearing, and everybody loved them. They just ate them. Uh, also, there's uh, in in um, in Canada, there's a lot of work um, by these PE people. And what they do is they put people on a weight training regime, and then they feed them. That increases the rate of, of muscle building. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting too. <laughs> okay. And um, okay, the future we need to do the nuts and bolts of farming. We need to figure out uh, irrigation because when, once you release it to the private sector, they're going to need to know how much they need to irrigate, and they'll set up their fields assuming X amount of water for the field. They, they need to know that before going in, otherwise they lose money or they might go bankrupt or something. Is this a very thirsty type of plant? This is a supposedly drought resistant plant. And right now we are exploring this option, the drought resistant aspect of it. We're trying to see how well they grow at one half the water amount of Sicily and today after we're done here, uh, Melody says, the plants are screaming uncle. <laughs> they say, we want more water. <laughs> okay, not the old ones. The old ones are dying of old age. The young ones we're gonna look at after we finish this to see whether we do in fact need to abandon our hypothesis for drought resistance. They claim to be, uh, not need very much um, fertilizer and um, we haven't, well, these have not received any fertilizer at all yet. And uh, we don't know. I mean, we need to do the experiment. We need to fertilize some little plots and not fertilize others and see if it helps or it doesn't help. Um, you know, the fewer chemicals we need to import to Hawaii, the better. The, way the weight of the stock, the weight of the stock relates to hempcrete. Farmers need to know that. If they invest X dollars in a field, how much return are they likely to get? We need to know that. Um, we need to 
cut off and weigh um, the leaves. Now you can see it's not insignificant amount of leaves. And that's for the cattle farmers or such. Okay. That's for the what? Cattle farmers. Oh. That's feed. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So in, in this feed here, you know, it's, it won't get sick? Huh? The cows won't get sick? I'm no. not going to smoke. And you can do the same thing that I did before with Hawaii range fed beef. Okay, I proved in before that this beef is healthier to eat. So Hawaii range, range fed beef is healthy. Um, the industry took that and they said, nobody buys healthy. People buy taste good. <laughs> <laughs> so they advertise taste good. They, they lost the healthy part. But you know, that's their business. That's what they do. So um, these should give you healthier beef if they eat the leaves. Um, moreover, I don't know why Phyllis quit being an egg farmer, but anyway, <laughs> she's my student. <laughs> um, we can make um, omega-3 eggs and we, we made omega-3 eggs long time ago it's, uh, they were able to obtain eight dollars a dozen and is that because the chicken eat hemp feed uh, we did it with kukui but can you do it with hemp? yes we can do it with hemp seed and moreover you know my my little parrot his, his favorite snack is hemp <laughs> 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 they, they love hemp